this week's chapter of my hero starts off exactly where we left off last week and it's already getting pretty heated um on the second page of the chapter we see that bakugo already acknowledges that he knows about deku's quirks from the fourth and sixth user which is pretty interesting and we get a really nice panel um, really cool looking panel of deku kind of hunched over looking almost not even human which is kind of what they're getting at this chapter that Deku isn't even acting like a normal person anymore but um he um we see Bakugo call him a nerd and Deku says thank you everybody for coming and he attempts to use his smoke screen to try and leave the fight instead of having to go ahead and fight his classmates which I kind of suspected would happen I didn't think Deku would actually want to harm any of his classmates so we see he's really on the defense of this entire chapter, just trying to get away from everybody and not have to really confront his problems or confront them. Another thing I've realized um, after really listening to how everybody knows about Deku's quirks already, I'm pretty sure that they've been following him like for the past couple days and that's probably why they know about his quirks to this extent since we do see that um they've been following him or it took them a few days from the last chapter when endeavor gave them the phone to actually track deku so i'm pretty sure what happened is they've been following him and watching him fight for the past couple of days and this is just them finally being able to really catch up to him which is pretty cool and that would also explain why all of the classmates also look pretty beat up already if you look at their costumes from the last chapter in the last panel where it showed um Ida, Ochako, and Bakugo all standing next to each other, we see that their costume are, costumes are also very messed up and there's pieces broken off and it looks like they've been going through a lot of fighting so they've definitely been following Deku and they've been getting into probably the same amount of fights that he has and we're showing, we're seeing that you know they're able to overcome all of this also just the same way Deku's doing it himself which is why they're trying to tell him to come back and stop trying to do everything himself and get help from his classmates. Bakugo also shows off a new move this chapter called Blast Landmines which completely dissipates all of the smoke that Deku used to attempt to escape. He then pressures Deku even more by saying that he didn't even tell them anything before he left and that basically in Deku's mind I guess everybody else is like an extra or a side character since he's so strong and that they just don't matter which is um, Bakugo trying to get into Deku's head to make him really think about what he's been doing to his classmates and what he's been doing to himself. Koda gets a cool moment in this chapter too where he's telling Deku that the headmaster said that he can come back so there's really, he's trying to tell Deku there's really no reason for him to keep running, he can literally come back to school anytime that he wants to. This leads us into the moment where Saro um, grabs Deku's black whip to um, redirect him and make him lose his balance while he was trying to use it to get away. And we get a cool flashback to where Saro was actually helping out Deku to control his black whip. Um, during the flashbacks in the war arc, we see that you know he's he contributed to Deku being able to use his black whip in such um, a good way, since Saro's quirk is very very similar to the black whip. We then get panels from both Jiro and Ojiro and they're basically thanking Deku saying that if it wasn't for him they probably wouldn't be the same people they are right now and that he's helped them out in the past and they really appreciate it and they'd appreciate it even more if he came back to UA so that they could help out each other the same way he helped them out in their time of need they want to help him out so that he can feel better. Deku's rebuttal to this is that All From One is going to be taking him away and we see some flashbacks to different moments where Deku in one way or another caused problems for the people around him and we're seeing that this is how Deku genuinely feels. He feels that if he's anywhere near the class 1A that they're all going to be in danger and that we'll probably get other moments where Bakugo almost died or we'll get moments with Aizawa during the war arc. And there's a lot of different things that Deku feels would happen if he's staying with the class so we're just seeing into Deku's psyche as to why he's running away and trying so hard not to be around the class. Deku then said something really interesting to Sato and I didn't feel that he had fallen this far into his delusion that the class shouldn't be around him but he tells Sato that anybody could really be with Aerie and that it didn't merely matter who was around her, who gave her candy or who was trying to aid her or make her happy which is very very weird to see Deku say since we've seen during um, 
the arc where Eri was introduced, he really did care about her and that he felt that he himself had to save her and that he had to make sure she felt okay. So to see him kind of throw her off to the side and say anybody could look after her, anybody could make her happy, she really does show that Deku is so disillusioned right now that he's not seeing things straight. This leads us into Momo putting um, a contraption around Deku that is a sleep machine that should have put him to sleep, but we see that Deku is just too strong for any one person in the class and he easily breaks out of this machine, but um, is instantly captured or held down by um, Kaminari, and Kaminari's telling him that it's okay, you know, you, you can just tell us everything, you are important to you, that you should want aid from us and that you should want to be helped by us. But Deku doesn't listen and um, he's then put inside a Ragnarok womb um, by Tokoyami, which Tokoyami says, you know, it was Deku's idea to use his power defensively and that this um, this dark shadow should actually be able to hold him since it is in like this darker part of the alleyway that they're in. But of course, it just isn't enough for Deku and he easily breaks out of it while destroying like the entire room that they're in like he destroys the whole thing which is very very crazy to show that just him getting a bit angry has him breaking down like this entire section of the building deku's mask then falls off and we get to this very um very sad panel where we see deku crying and he's telling the class to just get away from him he's saying i swear i'm fine still lying to them and lying to himself saying that he's okay but he's crying and we can see that he probably really does want to go back but in his mind he genuinely feels like going back is going to put everybody in danger and it's just really heartbreaking to see that he's having to go through all of this this then leads us into Todoroki saying what's with your face you know why why is it like that and he's saying the burden placed on you does it not allow you to cry like aren't you are you not able to anymore and he's telling Deku let's share the burden like let's let's help each other out of this situation Suyu then ends off the chapter for us by saying that Deku's important and that when you're sad or when you're trembling that you should be able to cry and shed tears. And she's saying that's how you truly become a hero by having your friends help you out and crying when you need to. And she's telling Deku that she's not going to let him go, that they're not going to let him escape and that they're going to bring him back one way or another. This is where the chapter then ends and all in all this was a very very good chapter to me. It was a chapter showing off everybody's growth in the past um, time period since we've seen them all and we're also being showed off that they really do care about Deku and Deku really does in his mind feel like this is the only way to protect his classmates by getting away from them and having them stay on the sidelines and not get near him. One thing I noticed about this chapter though is that we haven't seen Ochako at all, which I'm pretty sure Horikoshi is saving her for this um, next chapter with the final color page, and she's probably going to play a very very big role in trying to bring Deku back, and honestly I could see it going either way, I could see Deku getting um, away from the class and escaping, and I could also see him coming back because of Ochako's interference, and she probably kind of calms him down tells him something that he really did need to hear and that they would help him out and that he should come back to ua and they'd really be able to make sure that he's fine and that they can get through everything together this was definitely a solid chapter this week and i'm really really looking forward to seeing how it ends next week if deku gets away or if he finally comes back to ua and how things are really going to change with them going back to ua um it's completely different from how things were just a couple months ago in the My Hero universe, so it's going to be really interesting to see what it would be like with Deku going back to UA in this sort of hero society where it's a lot of chaos going on. This week's chapter was definitely very solid though, and I would give it a 9 out of 10. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys think that Deku is going to actually get away from the class or if you think that he's finally going to come to his senses and go back to UA. I could honestly see it going either way, but I know either way Horikoshi wants to paint the story, it's still going to be very interesting and it's going to be a very very fun ride. But definitely let me know and um, like the channel, subscribe if you liked the video and thank you for watching.